Hello there, I'm Kaz. You know, for as many video game sidekicks as there are out there, it's very fascinating that there's so few that have games of their own, much less games that are any good. I mean, take a look at Luigi, gaming's most famous sidekick's resume on his own. I think it's fair to say that Luigi's had a pretty poor career in games, despite his brother's popularity. Sure, he can jump higher than a shorter portly partner in time, but when your first standalone title is an edutainment title that is not Oregon's Trail or Cross Country Canada, you've got off to a pretty bad start. Oh, and not having your name in the title probably doesn't help. In some of the spin-offs, mainly the RPGs, he does outshine his brother, but as far as the original games go, the Green Plumber's titles are few and far between, much less any good. That is except for the GameCube launch title, Luigi's Mansion. People tend to either love it for its refreshing gameplay or dismiss it as a glorified tech demo that's lacking in content. Quite ironic since today's title started off with Shigeru Miyamoto testing the original game on the Nintendo 3DS hardware way back in 2010. Fast forward 3 years and now we have a sequel to Luigi's Mansion. First title Luigi's Mansion 2 at E3 2011, it has since then been renamed to Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Why? Because I guess Miyamoto just discovered Pink Floyd. Are there any queers in the audience tonight? Whatever the reason, under the guidance of Shigeru Miyamoto as producer, Luigi's Mansion The Great Gig in the Sky is being developed by Next Level Games, a Canadian developer most famous for the Mario Striker series and Captain America Super Soldier. Oh, and they also made Punch-Out. No, not that one. Yep, you're welcome for that, America! So, has Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon struck a pot of ghoulish gold, or is it a scary pile of leprechaun pellets? Let's rip up our vacuums and find out. The story can be pretty much summed up in one sentence. Dr. Egad from the first game asked Luigi to help him in a poltergeist parody to repair a Dark Moon satellite. That's it. Not that I'd expect a Mario or Luigi game to have some deep plot outside of the RPG spin-offs, but I will say that the DS, or Dual Scream as they call it, as a communication device is semi-clever and seeing Luigi getting abused is amusing as always, but aside from that, there's nothing much else to note. It's not a riveting tale of Luigi overcoming his fears as an individual or anything. Again, not a Mario RPG, not going to be worth any more time devoting to it, let's move on to the gameplay. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is a blend of puzzle solving and sucking. Sucking up ghosts, that is. Between the two, puzzle solving is the dominant activity, usually involving running around the game's five mansions searching for keys, ghouls, and the right items to move on to the next area. There were times when Dark Moon's mansions resembled dungeons taken from The Legend of Zelda, no doubt because of Miyamoto's hand in the game. Rather good dungeons too, I might add. Equally challenging and fun to explore while always finding new ways to make you exploit and utilize every tool you've got in your poltergust to advance to the next section. Speaking of which, these sections within the mansions are largely varied in both structure despite taking place within the same five mansions and size, ranging from the bite-sized five-minute dog hunts to brain-teasingly clever rooms that can take you well over an hour to complete. At the end of each mission, you're given a rank from 1 to 3 stars that details how many coins you've collected, booze, gems, types of ghosts you collected, and possible upgrades to your gear depending on how many coins you collected. While there's not much of a grand incentive to improve your scores or to find all the hidden gems, you will want to go back to find all the booze in order to unlock the bonus levels. The controls are smooth, for the most part, only the Garver controls feel a bit awkward. When crossing ledges, it's far too sensitive to every movement you make, and moving around the 3DS to vacuum up some ghosts doesn't feel natural at all. Thankfully, those are not necessary for the other core piece of the puzzle is catching ghosts, which is always satisfying throughout the entire 10 hour adventure. Simply flash the ghost with your flashlight and then pull back to trap the ghost. There's a wide variety of these specters too, some easier to capture than others. Some ghosts require you to use your UV ray before flashing them, others require you to be on the move to not get hit while you're sucking them up. It all adds a refreshing pace that carries itself throughout the entire game, which makes the bosses all the more disappointing. Actually, the bosses are 50-50. And I do mean 50-50, the first and final two-parter boss battles are excellent, making you use all your tools and everything you've learned up to that point to win, again, much like Zelda. Similar to it, but still gives you that same sweet feeling of victory when you finally beat it. The other three boss battles between them are, frankly, boring. They get a gold star for their creativity, but immediately lose it for being unengaging and tedious. Just dodge at the right time and bust those ghosts when their defenses are down. Other than the disappointing boss battle, there's only a few minor nitpicks that bother me, like pressing the touchpad whenever Egat calls you, which he does frequently. And since you'll never use the touchpad for anything aside from looking at where to go, it's more of a nuisance than a friendly reminder. What's that, Egad? Those ghosts just stole the gears and I should go get them? Sure, I'll do the exact same thing that I was going to do on my own. And no, there's no button for it. I tried them all. Early on, some objectives are hidden by the fixed camera angle, but you'll quickly learn to search every part of the mansion that you can anyway. Also, the game can be quite easy at times and then have a sudden difficulty spike that just comes out of nowhere, and that can get a tad frustrating. Lastly, there's escort missions with Toad. Yes, 
escort missions in a Luigi game. While they do lead to some creative puzzles, the good is outweighed by having to drag them around through the entire state and protect them from the ghosts. Other than that, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon's single player campaign is hauntingly fun. Oh, and there's also multiplayer. And it's pretty poor. You can't communicate with the other players, the levels are completely random, and it's all much less polished than its single player counterpart. If you're looking for quality handheld multiplayer matches, this is not the game for you. However, if you're looking for a scary sweet single player campaign, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon has you covered. Finally, the presentation. This is probably the second best looking game on the system aesthetically, second only to Resident Evil Revelations. It's more cartoonish and colorful than it is detailed and refined, though that's not to say that Dark Moon doesn't have its own share of refinements. In fact, I actually prefer Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon's gloomily charming mansions over Resident Evil Revelations' snowy mountaintops. The mansions are wonderful to look at and atmospheric without being too dark to see, ahem, and puts the 3D to great use without ever having to remind you to use it, ahem. Luigi himself is very expressive, displaying a wide variety of emotions that's always amusing to see. Voice acting is the usual grunts for the characters, which is to be expected, though Egads gets rather annoying since he's only got three and there's very little variation in between them. As for the music, it's eerily catchy and whimsically silly at the same time. You might not look forward to Egad, but you'll be jamming to his dual screamed ringtone. Overall, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is a masterfully presented title in the light. Luigi easily outshines his brother in this outing, and it's not just the flashlight that's doing all the work. This is a refreshing change of pace for the younger plumber, and one worthy of your 3DS library. Even though it occasionally solves in the dark, it's well worth the time and the money. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon gets an 8.5 out of 10. If you've been playing Fire Emblem Awakening for the millionth time and you're waiting for the next great 3DS title, this is it. Check it out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, game on my friends. the stream in this game? Or is that the reason why the multiplayer sucks?